Our next guest is a very beautiful lady who is a wonderful author. I'd like to welcome Carolyn T. Lynn. Carolyn, I'm, I'm so anxious to hear about your book, Heaven is Amazing, because all of us are thinking about heaven, all of us, especially when we get to be our age. That's right. That's <laughs> so right. tell me something about this wonderful book. Well, let me tell you why I wrote the book, first of all. Good. My husband passed away 12 years ago, and we had had a very difficult life because he had a mental health problem. Mm -hmm. And after he passed away and he was free of this illness, I thought, well, he's in heaven. I know he's in heaven, and I wonder what he's doing up there. (laughs) (laughs) And so uh, there have been a lot of people who have had near-death experiences Mm -hmm. or they've gone to heaven and come back. It seems like in the last few years they're they're happening all the time. They're they've been made into movies. One movie, Heaven is for Real, about a little boy who was three and mm-hmm. he went to heaven and then after he came back his parents discovered that he had had this experience and that he had seen a sister who had been aborted as a prenatally wow. and he saw other people and he described them, but this story came out little by little as the uh, movie describes and as the book describes. Mm-hmm. And then there are other books. There's a man who, a pastor, who was uh, on a bridge and hit by a semi truck and he died instantly. <sighs> and another pastor came along and prayed for him and was sitting in the back seat praying and began to sing the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And the dead man started singing with him. (laughs) And so he came back, and um, he has a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And that one has been made into a movie also, 90 Minutes in Heaven. And there have been others as well by physicians, Mm -hmm. and there have been stories by physicians. There's one physician in Florida who was instrumental in bringing a man back from the dead who had an experience to tell and more work to do. God didn't, in fact, the man wasn't even going to heaven. He was going to hell. And the doctor prayed for him and said, Lord God, If this man doesn't know you and is not saved, bring him back so that he can know you and go to heaven. And that's exactly what happened. And that same physician has seen, in in the latest interview I saw with him, 45 different people who have had near-death experiences. Oh, my Lord. So it becomes more and more common. And as I have watched these episodes or as I have seen the movies or heard the stories, read the books... I kind of put together a picture of what we can experience as believers when we go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And it's a wonderful, a wonderful picture of Jesus meeting us, taking us to heaven, taking us through the throne room of the Father, and the peace, the goodness, the feeling of rightness, Mm -hmm. the, the senses are enhanced, all the colors are more vibrant than anything we have on earth. The music also is alive, literally alive. The music is alive, and that too encourages the soul. So that all of these uh, descriptions have been included in the book, and we give that picture of what's going to happen when we die, what we're going to see in heaven, how we're going to react to people around us, because we will see our loved ones, and they will be beautiful, from what I have heard. If you want to be beautiful, those of us who are older, we've maybe lost some of our youth and beauty, but when we are in heaven, we will be young again. And I've heard it said that Jesus was 33 when he died. And that is about the range of where everybody will be, Mm -hmm. in the bloom of life, in the strongest point of their earthly existence. So the the book tells about that. It also gives a small glimpse of hell, and it says you don't want to go there. (laughs) And so we also tell about how to make sure that heaven is your destination, and what this wonderful, loving God has for everyone who knows him and who accepts his way of salvation and who 
uh, comes into fellowship with other believers through the heavenly experience. Well, that's wonderful because I'm sure that means an awful lot to people. They like to get some idea because uh, there's fear. You know, I know I was I was fearful of it mainly because I wanted to make sure I got my mission completed. And I am so in love with this world and everything. I see a moon or I, I just am in love with it. And I think, oh, I hate to leave this, but probably, like you say, it's even better on the other side. Oh, huh? <laughs> I think eye has not seen nor ear heard what God has prepared for those who love him. And so it's going to be more wonderful than we can possibly imagine. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> I was going to ask, it, and then you believe that, that you are in some kind of a body? Yes. You remember after Jesus rose from the dead, he came back to the apostles, and he did have a form that they recognized. Mm -hmm. They saw him. Even Mary Magdalene, when she saw him in the garden uh, where he was buried, she didn't really totally recognize him at first. She thought he was the gardener. Mm -hmm. But then when he spoke her name and said, Mary, oh. that tenderness, that love that was his person inside, she could connect with, and she knew that was her Rabboni. So that the, the body in heaven will be different, a spiritual body. We won't have all the same functions that we have on this earth. We won't need to have uh, digestive tracts to digest our food <laughs> or some of the other things that can give us health problems, but we will have a wonderful body. And I I have said in the book, and I believe that rather than speaking or communicating by language, we will communicate thought to thought so that when someone thinks something to us, we will receive that thought and be able to act on it. So we don't have to worry about knowing a language in heaven, which is a common language. And you know that it makes sense because I know with animals, especially our dogs and cats, <clears throat> we're always doing it through thought. We, a lot of times you don't have to say anything and they'll be with you in that moment. And I believe our animals will be with us in heaven. Oh, they better be. Well, and, and we have <laughs> such an investment in our animals on earth. We love our pets. And a loving God can only give us something that has been so meaningful in his loving way to us in heaven as well. So I'm sure that that's going to be part of our heavenly experience and our loved ones, right. those who have gone before. In fact, so many of the stories that I have heard when people get to the gates of heaven, their loved ones are waiting for them and they're, they're welcoming them into heaven and uh, rejoicing that they're there as well. Oh, I know my mother will be there because she's she's been in, in contact with me since she left, so I know that she's very anxious. But I'm not anxious. <laughs> and it's a comfort, isn't it, for you to know yes. these things. Yes, it and is. that's one of the reasons I think my book is important, because at this point there are so many things in life that tear at us that are difficult for us to live with. But if we have the comfort that what awaits us is so much better, that heaven is coming and it's God's best for us, then we can be encouraged and not be afraid of dying, but we can look forward to a better existence in the heavenly kingdom. Yes, I, I agree with you too on the, uh, the age, because that's, uh, that's a very important age. The 30, round 30 is just your whole life changes. All of the things that you did when you were a teenager and a young person, and then 30 puts you into another space. So it makes sense to me that you'd be about that age because actually I don't think we ever get beyond that age inside. Well, that could the be. The body gets mm -hmm. older, but I don't see why the spirit would age. Mm -hmm. uh, does that make any sense? Yes, and at that point it seems like we've reached maturity, a young maturity, mm -hmm. and we still have a lifetime of experiences to add to right. that, but we have reached the capacity of a, a certain level of maturity, and that is comforting. That is, that's, that's a good for time. Sure. That's for sure. Uh, 
What are some what are some of the questions that you answer in this book? Let me see. Oh, and it's a very easy read. I, oh. It's very quick. It's in large print, oh, not <laughs> super large, but 14 font. So it's uh, for those of us with graying hair, it's not as difficult to read as some of the other <laughs> things. And um, we, we talk, to, talk about the very things you've been asking about. And uh, we will eat, we will enjoy the things that we've enjoyed here on earth. But really? they will be different in our new bodies. Huh. And one of the things I came across that I thought was so interesting is everything will be made out of light. We mm -hmm. know that light plays a big role in God's coming to earth through Jesus. In Scripture, the book of John talks about God as being the source of light and the Lord of light. Mm -hmm. And so light will play a big factor in what is around us in heaven. It won't have the same material substance that things on earth have. That's really interesting because light, I love light. I like Christmas tree lights, any kind of light. I like mm -hmm. light rooms. And uh, I got a message one time, I don't know how it got through, but that uh, was Jesus was in charge of the light. Oh, he is the light, yes. just as God the Father is the light, and mm -hmm. we come to that light through him. And people who are dying oftentimes will see a light. Mm -hmm. They'll see a light and a figure there where they'll be drawn to a light so that it has a, a part of, of heaven in us. And, and we respond to light. We respond to sunshine. We respond to the light around us. And if we don't have light, we shrivel up. So mm -hmm. it's part of our lives here in a very meaningful way, too. Well, you're bringing a light to a lot of people with this book. And so uh, let's uh, let the commercial come on, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about your other book. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.